Hello and welcome. This is the Paper Jungle. I welcome you to my newest tutorial for Country Craft Creations. And this time I am using the exclusive collection from Country Craft Creation called General Store. It is such a beautiful paper. And what I have created this time is a box with an album using the Explosion Board by We Are Memory Keepers. Now on the cover of the box I have the cut aparts and a small doily. I created a flower cluster. This is one of the cut aparts and then this is the awning from the cover sheet. I just cut it out and attached it to the top of the box. On the inside I've just got the burgundy and that is a discontinued color from Country Craft Creations. And your box opens like this. Aren't those papers beautiful? Just absolutely gorgeous. I love the colors. So let me make sure I'm in frame for you. I want to make sure you see it all. I have six pages and a folder inside. And I have used the um, cream colored artisan. She has three shades of a um, neutral. One is more of a off-white or an ivory. Uh, one is a true white and one leads a little bit more to a yellowish tinge and I think it's called ivory I'm not sure but if you look in her um, at her site you'll see the three colors and this is the one that is more of an ivory cream color so I have um, six pages here the first three are cut like file folders and there is a tutorial that tells you how to do this and I've just attached the paper and this is a place for a photo and it's open there so you can put a photo behind it and then on the back side I've used another of the design papers and I cut these words out from the uh, one of the design sheets this one says medicine the next one says hardware and the third one says fancy dry goods so this second page has a little flap you can put a photo or journal there I would journal there probably and put a photo over here and this is just a die I had in my stash with some washi tape and then on the back side, I love this paper, it has the U.S. mail truck pulled by a horse with a little umbrella over it. I thought that was so pretty. And this is very typical of the old newspaper prints, so pretty. And then this is one of the collage papers that's in the collection. It's really a pretty pa paper. And then the uh, fourth page is a pocket. And on the um, cut part list, uh, the cut list, I um, called for six pages cut to this size but I ended up using five because I made this pocket instead of using the sixth one and in here I have just stenciled so that you can uh, journal and add a photo and then the third one is just a photo mat or the second one why do I say third I've lost my mind here people it just goes in the pocket and this is the uh, design paper that I cut these words out of. There's uh, three sheets of this. It's I love that paper. It's one of my favorites. That and this burgundy I love. So then when you flip it over, this page I cut so that I made uh, two flaps out of it. I used a cut apart on each side. So you have notes and a to-do list. And then this part is a pocket with two of the cut aparts in it this paper so cute and then I stenciled again this time with blue and on the back side I just have a ribbon for a tuck spot and a little photo mat in there and then this is page six has a crisscross pocket and I used a couple of the cut aparts and just made some tags with the design paper and another one of the cut aparts and those all just go in there and then the last last page is a tuck spot for photos or recipe cards or whatever you might want to add in there. More stenciling. I love this stencil. I just happen to have that in my stash. And then this is a triple pocket. And the tags go all the way down to the bottom. And this is all in your cut list. And I didn't put anything on the tags. Simply so that there would be room for photos and journaling and whatever you might have because um, I didn't account for the depth of this 
and so it made these kind of stand up a little bit in the air, which I, I wish they laid flatter, but there's enough depth in the side of the the box that it it fits fine. I just wish they laid a little flatter, but you live and learn, and so I know what I'll do next time to change that. So you just fold up your corners, start over at one side, tuck the other side in, and there you go. Isn't that pretty? So pretty, and I love the way the sides turned out. Just beautiful. This paper is just gorgeous. So I hope you enjoy this, and if you make one, uh, share some photos with us um, when you finish your project, and let us uh, enjoy your finished project as well. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye. Hello. I am making a box with a album and other items as a part. I guess I'll just call it an album in a box. But it's also got other things besides the album. Everything will be one fixed, it's one fixed unit where it's the album does not come out. And I'm using the explosion board to create the box. So I'm using the extra small line to score with. Let me get the little thing out of here. I've already scored mine, but I wanted to share with you what I did. I have this is a 12 by 12 artisan cardstock, and I've used the extra small line scored all the way down. Oops! Oh goodness, I can't hang on to anything all the way around on all four sides and then you will take and you will score this from the corner in into where these two lines intersect so you're just going to score in here well I keep getting off the beaten track score all the way across down to where they intersect on all four corners so that when we're done it will fold up like this and make your box bottom. And on the lid, I have scored at nine and three quarters by nine and three quarters. And then I'm just going to use the score line for the lid, which is this first one here. And you will score all four sides, same way as you did the bottom, just using the lid score line here all the way around. And then we need to cut the top because it will be glued shut after I decorate it, but I want to get most of the decorations on it before I glue it shut. Um, what I like to do is I cut in with the scissors here on this score line and then I just angle cut it so that when I fold it up I have a nice nice corner here once I'm ready to glue it. You'll have a nice squared corner here. But I like to do it pinwheel style. A lot of people cut here and then they'll cut here and then on these four. I like to turn it one time and cut, turn it one time and cut, and then the last time and cut. There's been times I've made boxes that if they are cut here and here, it seems to me a lot of times that these edges bow out and I feel like I get a tighter uh, corner when I do it this way. But you can do it however you like. It doesn't make any difference. Whatever you're comfortable with. Then we're going to start on the bottom. And I have cut a piece of the Burgundy Artisan. And I am going to put it in the bottom. Now I'll do the gluing on all of that off, off screen because I don't have everything um, inked. And I'm going to put this one over the burgundy. Now your center square, I believe, is seven. Let me double check. It's been a while since I cut this. Yes, it's seven, seven and a quarter. So this burgundy should be seven and one eighth and it's a square, seven and one-eighth by seven and one-eighth. And then my pattern paper is seven, seven by seven. So that will lay up 
over top of that, giving us a nice matte. Now this artisan is kind of a cream color. It's an off-white, but it's not yellow. It's, she's got several different colors in there, and you'll have to look if you want to make it just exactly like mine. Just get the one that is more like a winter white or an ivory. And then on the inside of each one of these panels, Now the sides of the bottom box are two inches, so I'm going to have these two like this, and then these two, and that's going to be how that goes. And then I cut, I think these are two inch squares, let me make sure, yes, two inch. So I cut squares that are one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths of this floral print, I'll show you, here's a bigger piece of it here you can see. I cut uh, squares that are 1 and 7 eighths by 1 and 7 eighths and then I put them in my cutter and just cut them diagonally so that I'll have pieces for the corners. And I like that there because it has the red, the blue, and the cream and it kind of pulls everything together. So I will do all of that offline and I will come back and we'll start building the uh, inside and I'll show you I am using um, Stack the Deck for this. I just like it better than the, um, what is it called, the Hidden Hinge. I, to me, it just is so stiff. So what I have is a 4 by 6 and 5 eighths. And then the second piece is three by six and five eighths. They should all be the same. And the third one is two inches. Now on the two inch, I've scored it three quarters, then I turned it around and scored it at three quarters. So that leaves you a half inch gusset in the middle. Then on this one, I scored the same three quarters, turned it around and scored three quarters. So that way this will sit right over the center of that one. This one is done the same way, scored three quarters. Turn it around and score three quarters. And it will sit in the center of this one so that you have a half inch gusset on each side. And that will give you six pages. And this is going to be attached to the inside bottom of the box. So I will be back shortly and we'll put this together and get it in there and we'll cut some pages and we'll be on a roll. Okay, I have attached all the papers to the base, the bottom piece of the box so that when it closes up, it will go like, like so. Like that. Now, I measured in and I made myself a little tick mark from this, the edge of this burgundy I want my base piece of the album pages to be in one half inch from the so from the left side and from the bottom. And I've got a half inch here. Make myself a little mark there. Okay, so I can see that. And then I also marked in a half inch from the side so I can get my placement straight on the second piece. This one is the four by, I think I said five and a quarter. Yes, five and a quarter. And the bottom corner of this is going to be on my tick mark a half inch from the side and a half inch from the bottom right there. So I'm going to attach glue only to this part. Well maybe I am if it comes out. Let's see what it does. And there it comes. I didn't think it was going to cooperate with me. 
I want plenty of glue on there so it doesn't move. Because we're going to have three pieces to this stack the deck, which gives us six pages. Okay, now I've got to get it lined up just right. Here is my half inch, and here is my half inch. Before I press it down, I want to double check. That is half. And that is half. So we are straight. I think. Yes, we are. I want to make sure. So there's my half inch. Now my second piece is three by five and a quarter and I am going to line it up like this but I am going to move it up to half inch from the top and I'm going to line it up with this tick mark here on the side and a half inch mark that I have up here. I want my pages staggered so they're not all the same and because I have this under here this is going to be just under three quarter inches above so I'm going to cut me a little piece the width of that which is an inch and a half this piece is an inch and a half wide and I cut me a little piece that's three quarter inches just under three quarter and I'm going to glue that to the back so it'll lay flush nobody's going to see it but it'll keep it laying right I'm going to lay it just below the edge and just inside that fold. And then we're going to lay it down as our second layer. So let's line it up at the half up here and the half there. So it is straight. There it is. Yes. That is straight. I think yes. So that gives us our four page flange. Now these little tick marks are all going to be covered up with paper, but you can erase them if you want to. And on, on these flanges, I angle top um, the corners, each, each one of them, just a little bit. Now this one you can place anywhere you want to. I am not going to take it below the half inch. I am going to just stagger it like this down the center of these. And it is, I've got a scrap here. just about a half inch below this one here. And I'm just going to put a, a little bumper in there. So I want it to lay flush like everything else. And I'll trim that off. And we'll glue that in place. Then we'll have our six pages for our six hinges. We don't have any pages yet. So I'm going to line it up with these little tick marks here. And press it in the center. And that 
this straight. Then I have this piece, which is, here's going to be your pages, or your hinges. And I have this little folder that's going to go over here. And I thought I made a, I don't see a half inch mark there. Maybe I didn't do it. I may put a half inch mark over here from the burgundy again. from the bottom as well so that I have room at the top for because it's going to be a three piece or three inserts I want to have room at the top so that I can put something down from here so let me move this out of the way for the moment and I'll give you the measurements on this this is ten and a quarter I think it's four and a half Yes, four and a half. And on the long sides, you're going to score all the way down at a half inch on both long sides. Then you're going to turn it this way, and you're going to score at five and three quarters. And then I just put a V-shaped notch in here so that when you fold this in and this to the back, it makes a double pocket. And then we have this small one which is four and a half. Yep. By three and three quarters. And it is going to go on top of this one. That will give you three pockets. One, two, and three. And on these edges, I did taper each one of them. So whatever you slide behind it, just slides in, each, in the same thing on this one. And then you'll want to angle cut these so that you don't have any overlap back here that gives you bulk. And that'll go in there like that. So, we can attach that. So, oh, I do need one more piece. And I almost forgot that. And I want to cut it four and a quarter. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me cut it real quick. Four and a quarter. I hope it's one inch wide. It is. It's a little over an inch wide, but that's okay. I need a scoring tool right here. Let's cut it in an inch. scored at a half. I hope you can hear me as I talk to myself. I'm going to score this real quick and then I'll show you what I did. Oh, half inch. Okay. Just a one inch scrap. Need it that wide? Why the cut it so? I don't know. I'll just trim it off here. Okay. A one inch strip, and I scored it in half. And it is three and a half. And I'm just going to fold that in half. Let me burnish it, because we need a little stopper on the bottom of this. So I am going to glue this in here. Along the bottom, so whatever we put in this back pocket doesn't fall out. Almost forgot that part. There we go. Right along the bottom. Oops, need straight. There we go. Let me burnish it down real quick. 
and if you've watched any of my tutorials, you know that I like to put a piece of tape along the bottom of the hinge. Because if you don't, okay, so it needs to go this way. If you don't, anything you put in here is going to get caught. on that edge. So let me taper this a little bit more severe. Don't need all that excess in there. Okay. So now we can put glue on these. Actually, let me put this first. And I should have tapered those those edges too, and I didn't. It'll just be in the way if I don't. Okay, so we're going to set this bottom corner down right here on the half inch. And where's my side mark? There it is. And my bottom mark right there. too much in my way. I think that's more than a half. I'm going to move it over just a little bit. That right there. And right along the edge. Whoops. Of that. Turn it. I don't think I got enough glue. Oh, I put the, my glue dried up before I got to it because I wasted too much time. that down. Okay, now we can glue the sides. And this side. up real quick. I meant to put a notch in these and I forgot. Let me do that. Seven five is halfway. So let me put this in here at one and three quarters. There we go. Now we're good. I almost forgot that. Doesn't look like there's much glue under there. I'll put a little bit more. And 
I put the, glue, the tape in the wrong place, too. Boy, I'm on a roll today. You can tell I haven't done a video in a while. Let me grab that tape again. I want it right here. Okay, now, let's close that one up. That looks much better with the notch. Okay, 1.75 again, so one and three quarters. Oops, almost did two and three quarters. That would have been a big mistake. This one shut. Hi, babe. You need the computer? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll be done here in just a second. Just gluing a couple pieces down. Alright, then we're going to press this into place. Seven five one more time. And we'll glue this one down. And I'm gonna let these set up and meanwhile I'll cut out my design paper and then I'll be back in touch with you. third pocket 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 there we go Okay, good enough. I will be back shortly. Okay, I am, <clears throat> excuse me, have a little bit of a cold, but I'm going to get through this. I'm ready to put the pages uh, together on these little flanges. The only thing is, I'm as normal as I can be. I didn't account for the depth of this, so these are going to kind of not lay flat, but they're going to be okay. So on your cutting list you have um, where it says to cut six pieces that are four, I think by five and a quarter. Yeah, five and three quarters. And those are essentially going to be what attaches to these pages. And this one is just a tuck spot. Let me show you. Whatever you want to put in here, recipe cards, photo mats, whatever. And this is going to attach to the back side of this one. And I did bend it a little bit. I just took my ruler and put it along the edge and just kind of gave it a little bit of a bend so that it would allow it to lay a little bit flatter. So I'm going to add glue to the back side of this hinge. I think I am if it'll come out. And all I've done on this one is stencil. And then I used a scrap of the piece of paper and one of the cut aparts. And that's all I've done to this. So that is going to go on the back. There comes the glue finally. Our weather has been so weird this year. It just goes from hot to cold to hot to cold and you just 
I don't know how to predict what to wear, how to behave. Now, let's see, I'm leaving just a little bit where I scored that. And it's going to hang out above, which is what I want. And then when I turn this over, this opposite side is going, uh, it's this same paper here. And I used uh, the, the back side of, I don't know which one it is, but it's um, a green muted print. Let me see if I've got it here. I think it might be, I don't know which one it's on the back of. Anyway, I just cut a, um, I think it was a, a three inch square. Yeah, I cut a three inch square and then I cut it corner to corner so I had these two corner pieces and I just took a scrap of paper that I had and cut some little borders and ran it along the sides and I inked it with um, coffee, archival ink in the coffee color and I had a little piece of burlap in my stash I put behind there. This is one of the cut aparts in this one as well and I am just going to attach it to this piece. Actually, I think I'll put my glue here. I've got the sniffles here. Hope I don't gross you out. I'm trying not to. Okay. And I'm going to match up my corners as best I can. trying to leave a little bit of the cream colored border around it. Just a small border. There we go. That way you'll have make sure I get a good burnish. It's kind of hard once you've already put everything in place. So that gives us a tuck spot down in here as well, all the way across. So there's that one. Now on the next one, I measured down two and three quarters, and I cut a little slit in it. So that I can have a double page. And I took two of the cut aparts, and I mounted one of them on a piece of the cream. and. This is one of the um, pieces here that I told you to cut for these. I cut one of them up and used it for this. Um, and I only ended up using five of them. I didn't use all six. Um, so this is going to go on the back side here. So let me add some glue and I'm not going to put it all the way to the bottom of the hinge. I want it to have a little bit of leeway so that it doesn't stand up in the air too terribly bad. So, I want to put it about like so. I know it's not going to lay flat, I just, it's just the way it is. So there's. sure it's straight. And then this one is going to go on the back side of it like this and it'll leave a little border there as well. And I did go over it with the, the same ink, the archival coffee. It's not doing too bad, is it? Okay, now for the bottom part. <clears throat> what I have is I want to wrap this ribbon, and this was just a 
clear ribbon that I had in my stash and I want to wrap it around here so that it will make a, um, a little tuck spot but what I did was I put it in the the red one Let's see what color I used uh, red geranium archival red geranium and the stenciling that I did on that one I showed you is night sky okay so let me get my score tape here I ran it through the um, archival ink late last night and I wanted to let it set up overnight to make sure the ink was dry so it wouldn't bleed on my paper. my ribbon to the score tape. Oops, that's not pulled straight. that and then on this side which is the opposite side I have a paper band and I'm just going to put glue on that did it to wrap around. Pooey. Alright. I'll have to put glue up under here. Because that's the way I measured it. Otherwise it'll be too long. Okay, so this will be the back side. Oops. Not quite straight. There we go. Okay. Okay, sorry about that interruption. I had some camera maintenance to take care of. So all I did was finish putting the, these, this one down. And it has a tuck spot here. And then on the back side under the ribbon. So the next page we're going to do is just going to be a pocket. Oh, sniffle, sniffle. Okay, so I'm going to put my glue on here. And these are just, let me see, they are five and a half by just under three. And I'm going to put one on the back side. Sorry guys, I can't quit sniffing. Oh, come on, glue. It's the one thing about I love this glue, but I hate the bottle. It just jams up so easy. Okay. And you can put it in any position you want. I just want them to stagger a little bit so the pages are all at different levels. So I'll put this one like this and I'm gonna oops draw it back just a little from the edge like that. Make sure I'm straight on this side. And press it into place. This one will just sandwich on top of it and that will make a pocket. So we're just going to glue these three sides, the two short ends, and the one long end that's not punched. 
and I just used the uh, small envelope punch board and punched a little notch in the center. So let me get these lined up. Let's get this one back a little bit more. here. I'm not going to pull on it too hard until my glue sets up. And then the last three I made are going to be um, file folders, sort of, but they're not They're not going to open like file folders. Uh, I'm just going to put paper on the back side like this. I haven't done them yet. And I'll make a tuck spot on each one of them. I don't know what it's going to be yet. I haven't cut anything out for it. I just want to put paper on the back for now. And I'll do any embellishment I'll do off screen. But you'll see the finished product when I do the walkthrough of the finished thing. And you can always stop um, the video at any point that you want to copy something or remember what I did or how I did it. Okay, so that's going to go on here like that. I want to back it up just a little bit off of that edge. Notice back here I cut little strips of this same background paper just to fill in that. And I'll finish that off too. Okay, and then on this side I'm going to put this paper. Sniffle, sniffle, here I go again. At least I'm not coughing up a storm today. The last couple of days the cough's been terrible. Donald's wife came home from work the other day with a cold and now everybody in the house has got the sniffles. down. That would have been horrible. Just making sure those match up okay. So we'll put this one down. This one says fancy dry goods and this one says hardware I was trying to tell you a while ago what that green print was on the back of that I was looking for. It's on the back of this one. <laughs> Lord, I can't quit sniffing. Alright, just like that.
goodness gracious. And then the back side of this one. And this is our last page. And then I want to show you what I'm doing with the lid. And then that will finish up the tutorial. And when I come back, you'll see any embellishments or inserts that I've made for the pockets. I don't put all that on the um, cut list because you may have different things you want to make, different ideas, which is all well and good. Everybody likes what they like, and it's your album, so you should make it your way. And this one says medicine. And I just cut that out of one of the design pages, and I'll show you here in a minute which one. As soon as I get this glued down. And this one is going to be down like so. And then I'm going to put this one on the front. They don't stick up too terribly bad. Okay, so now let me show you what I want to do with the lid. Okay, I have added the burgundy. And then this print is on the back side of one of the small cut-aparts. I just used a doily die that I had in my stash and I cut out the burgundy in a cream color. This is one of your cut-aparts. But this was not in the center of it. I don't know if I've got any more of them left. Let me look and I'll show you real quick. Um, we've got some here. Okay, here's what I did. I wanted the blue and the red border. But it had this mutis, muted country store in it. So I cut the rocking chair out of this one and used some um, uh, pop dots and stuck it in the middle so I could get this. I wanted the rocking chair, but I wanted the blue border, so that's what I did. And I've cut out some other things and I've made some flowers with the um, um, Heartfelt Creation dies that I got from Tammy. I cut out the awning off of the cover sheet and just put that up at the top. I'm going to have a cluster of flowers here with some other embellishments but I wanted to show you the corners the reason I cut it in the fantail is so that when I put it around like this I can bring the tab to the outside if I put it on the inside then you've got this raw edge right here but if I wrap it around this way it's completely smooth and I like that better. So that's what I'm going to do. And then once I wrap those, I will add these strips all the way around. And I've cut four of those at six or seven and um, just, just maybe seven and five eighths by one inch. I cut four of those. So that is it for now. I will be back with the final walkthrough and share with you everything that I've done when it's completed. I haven't put anything other than the burgundy on the inside of the lid. I don't know if I'll be adding anything to it or not. I may just see what I've got left after I finish up what I have planned. Alright, thanks for watching. Have a great day. If you haven't already subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing that. Click the bell and then you'll know when I upload something new. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.